Alright, I decided to go ahead and do this video because I get a lot of questions about it and so I figure we'll go ahead and put all that to rest. What's the point of a semi-automatic belt fit? And why are they so expensive? The what's the point part is easy. Uh, I wanted a PKM. I looked. I don't see any full auto PKMs, so I have to go with semi-auto. Now, a lot of people say, well, if the belt fit, you know, semi-auto would be lame, you know, blah, 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 blah. Bet you own an AR-15. That's it. Where's your transferable M16? Oh, that's right, you don't have one. Lame as fuck. So, contradiction. But anyway, hop right on over to the why are they expensive. The why is easy. You have to modify it a lot. You have to get it approved by ATF. You have to put measures in place so that it can't be easily converted back to full auto. So you figure, hey, what's the point in that? Or how hard is that? The point is they're trying to make money and they're trying to get people guns that you wouldn't normally see. It's a PKM. Can't just walk into a gun store and say, hey, I'd like a PKM. They're not gonna have one. Can't order one, don't know where one's at. Pretty much right now it's just factory configuration. All the normal stuff in there. You got your bolt, all that good stuff. Now, the technical part. PKMs are open bolt firearms. And what that means is, let's demonstrate with the Uzis. This is a open bolt Uzi. Generating. Principle is, when you cock it, the bolt stays backwards. Locked in the back. Normal, everyday firearms are what they call closed bolt. You have to pull it back, let it go, the spring pushes the bolt forward, which chambers around. These don't chamber around until it's firing. It will literally drop, fires the round right as soon as it hits home, and it just keeps going back and goes auto until it's empty. This one actually will fire one round, come back, strip another round, but then it does not fire when it goes forward. Open bolt has its advantages and disadvantages. The advantage is it uses less parts. Yes, literally less parts. This one, the firing pin's built in, so you don't need a hammer, you don't need any of that crap. This thing's got a striker, hammer, spring, all that crap added to it. So there's actually more parts in a closed bolt than an open bolt. So you figure, okay, that's not a big deal. Technically, you could break down a PKM, you take the spring assembly out, and you just take the bolt out, and carrier, and you're done. Easy peasy. Yeah, the whole world likes the PKM. Semi-automatic one, you need all this shit. Yeah. You got your hammer there that you had to manufacture. It looks like it was easy to just whip up. You got all your different springs, hammer spring, main spring. And then you got this wonderful device. You're thinking, what the fuck is that? A big firing pin, right? No. What they actually do is this is drilled, drilled, drilled right there in the back. This is what the hammer rides on. So now you have your hammer. You had to do all this shit. To make it from a open bolt to a closed bolt. And it's got to work reliably. Nobody wants to buy a $5,000 piece of junk. So that takes time. That takes money. That takes know-how, patience. That's where the extra money go. Let me stick this back in there. there and contrary to popular belief, these are actually very accurate. You can hit steel all day long. We can sit here and like, put this motherfucker all back together. That spring goes into that spring. Oh, and the best part is they had to add a friggin' bar. Yeah, that's right. That bar wasn't normally there. This is what the assembly actually rides back into. And you take it out right there. So they had to literally engineer all that just to make this thing work. And so that does 
take a lot of work. So once you got all the springs together, you can then stick it back in your fire, your hammer channel there. Just get it in the hole, Stuart. Let's do it the old fashioned way. Good at putting it in the hole. Here. Don't normally film while I do that. Alright, so we stick all of that crap back in there. Actually, once we put the hammer back in. It actually works if you take the barrel tab out. Actually, push the barrel forward a little bit. Push that little extra room we need. There we go. Okay. Maybe we can stick that in there. And drop the hammer. Actually, let's stick the barrel back in there first. One-handed. There we go. Right, drop the hammer. All this extra bullshit in there. I'm gonna lay this down so I can safely put this in there without putting it through my eyeball. All right. So now we got that back operational. I got something on should answer your question on why they're so expensive. And yes, it's the same thing as a friggin' AR-15. Except I'd rather have this PKM than an AR-15. But a lot of people figure then, well, okay, buy the fully automatic version. Yeah, it's easy for you to say. Vector Mini Uzi, I think I paid like 1100 bucks for that. All right, had to clean it up a little bit to make it work, but that's fine. Transferable Uzi. I paid $9,000 for that crap. Today, that's not going to happen. That's going to cost you like eleven, twelve thousand. 12000 Who the hell wants to spend that on a gun just because it's full auto? I didn't really want to, but I wanted an Uzi, so there you go. The PKM, you can forget about that. There's maybe two on the registry, as civilians can only own the guns that are on the NFA registry. There's 187000 I've never seen a PKM transferable. A couple of my friends have. They're probably $100,000. I'm, I'm cool. I'm going to go ahead and just stick with the semi-auto. Even these are hard to find. A parts kit, just a chopped up one. $4,000. You want one of these? They sold brand new for $5,000 back in like two early 2000s. It's going to cost you like ten grand a day because of supply and demand. Same with that. You can buy an Uzi anywhere, just regular old semi-automatic Uzi. It ain't going to be so easy to come by. You're going to have to spend some money on that. But all in all, I just wanted to clear that up. I didn't really get into this stuff at first. Had a back injury, so that made it where I couldn't really go shoot a whole lot. I really like my PTR-91. That bitch is going to sit right there for probably a really long time because I just simply can't shoot it. I shot that the other day, though. It all sits on the tripod. Doesn't hurt me. Got the MG3, BZ59, SG43. I can sit down and shoot these things. That doesn't, you know, hurt me. Any. So that's invaluable to a lot of people. Not to mention, you know, serves many other roles. Only downfall is they're expensive, yes. But you get your money's worth and 
usually successful semi-automatic bolt feds you can always get your money back out of it if need be um, that's pretty much it I just want to go ahead and clear up a lot of the reasons why people may stay away from these just because they believe all the stupid hype there's really no hype it, if you want something nice that works it's gonna cost money especially if that item is hard to produce so if anybody else can produce me a PKM for three grand that actually works, I'd be impressed, but you're not gonna do it. So if you do, give me a call.